Well, the Jets lose again. Five in a row. Five straight losses for Robert Sala in the New York Jets. We haven't seen a Jets win since two weeks before Halloween. We are now in December. And the last time we as a fan base saw a Jets win was two weeks before Halloween. Think about that. This is an NFL team that's considered win now. We are four and eight on the season. A complete disgrace. A complete and utter embarrassment. I mean, what what a waste. What a colossal what a colossal waste today was. What a waste of a defensive performance. What a waste of a special teams performance. We drop the Jets finished the day with eight points. What makes it even worse, the offense was was responsible for zero. They were they were responsible for nothing. They were horrendous once again. But you know what? Maybe it's my fault. Maybe maybe it's maybe I'm at fault for just you know thinking about this team being on par with teams like the Indianapolis Colts, the Houston Texans, the Buffalo Bills, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cleveland, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, uh, the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Raiders. Uh, maybe I shouldn't think or shouldn't compare the Jets to you know the majority of the AFC. Maybe I should be comparing comparing this team to Carolina. Maybe I should be comparing them to Arizona in New England cuz that's what they look like. The Jets are this is not a good football team. Like they are actually horrible. And it sucks to say it because this defense is freaking good. The special teams unit is freaking good. But the offense is so bad, so dysfunctional that the Jets are a laughing stock. We are literally a laughing stock. Going back, I mean we we talked about it in numerous videos, right? Buffalo, uh, Bills players dancing, doing the Quinn and Williams sack dance, taking cheap shots of the Jets. Nothing's going to get done about it. Miami, dancing, laughing, Mike McDaniel trolling Jets fans in the stands. Nothing's going to get done about it. The Jets are a joke. We have Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tony Gonzalez and Richard Sherman literally laughing at the Jets' offensive numbers before the Dolphin game even started on the panel on Amazon Prime back on Black Friday. I remember it perfectly. They were laughing and joking and talking about the Jets with a smirk on their face because that's how bad the Jets are offensively. They don't have Nathaniel Hackett, Tim Boyle, the quarterback situation, the offensive line, the free agent failures made by Joe Douglas. It's all been a colossal waste. A wasted season. We are four games beneath 500. 500 is the average mark. And we're four games beneath that as a win now football team. And there's the, the blame, there's too much blame to go around. But it's just a complete joke. It's a waste of a defensive performance, like I said. It's a waste of a great special teams performance. It's a waste of fans' time. Today felt like a waste of time. I mean, it, it's 425, 426 right now. On the East Coast, this game started at one o'clock. Three and a half hours. It's just watching punt after punt after punt after punt. Turn over here, punt, punt, turn over here, punt. Like, I, I had to jot down some stats. <sighs> My Lord, three turnovers today. Again, the Jets are rolling out another week where they turn the ball over multiple times. They were... <laughs> My Lord, two of 15 on third downs. Are you kidding me? How are we so bad on third downs every single week? Every single week. We, there's, the third down efficiency is literally, percentage-wise, the, the stats back it up, the numbers back it up. They are literally some of, if not the worst third down completion, uh, the uh, third down conversion rate in NFL history, at least in the last 50 years, 2 and 15 is really going to help that number shoot up. Are you kidding me? 2 of fi 2 of 15 on third downs. We had 5 points at halftime. <sighs> and 11 penalties for 71 yards. If you think about a team taking the ball out uh taking possession with a touchback, right? 20 25 yards. And you st you add on top of that 71 yards, that's a free football field. The Jets are, and I thought the officiating today was horrendous. I thought it was absolutely awful. 
on both sides but specifically like there were a couple like that dj reed interception i like i j i didn't understand it so as much as i want to blame the refs and kind of you know talk about them I, I have to look at what we're seeing every week with this football team, and we are constantly flagged, so undisciplined. Where's the accountability? False starts here, holdings here, pass interference here, personal foul here. Week after week after week after week after week, this team is flagged nonstop. It is, they're flagged nonstop. <sighs> Only made one red zone appearance. What a surprise the Jets didn't score again, right? Everybody's making this huge, huge deal, right? The Jets are talking about Nathaniel Hackett's, you know, ability to have success in the, success in the red zone uh, back in Green Bay, the gold zone. I call it the O zone, right? Because every time they get into the red zone, there's a 0% chance they're getting in for a TD. It is a joke. And by no means am I, you know, of course we got to give credit to Atlanta, you know, despite the win only being 13-8. They did enough to win on the road. By the way, going into the game, they were 1-4 and four on the road. They come into MetLife Stadium, it's poor, bad weather, they're going to have to run the football, everybody knows that they're going to have to run the football, and we couldn't stop it. Right, we couldn't we we couldn't beat the Atlanta Falcons, a sub-500 football team, at home in bad weather where we, when we knew exactly what they were going to do offensively and they drop 13 points we can't beat that why can't we beat that the defense did their job the defense got us points special teams got us points the offense didn't get us any points the team offensively is clueless You know, I, I guess in, in the weeks prior, you can say, well, you know, hey, you can understand that the loss against the Dolphins, they're a great team, high-flying offense, best offensive football. Buffalo, despite the record, is still a really, really good football team. Uh, the Chargers, you know, they, uh, you know, they're, they're not great, but they, they have some pieces. The Raiders, you know, they were, they were riding the momentum with Antonio Pierce. But this week, you know, a Falcons team with a lot of question marks at home we look like this yeah colossal waste of time i'm just i'm disgusted with joe douglas on how he it, it just seems like everybody's focused on 2024 it's not fair to the players in the locker room it's not fair to the sauce gardeners of the world the dj reeds of the world the quinn and williams the greg zerline it's not fair to these guys it's really not we are wasting two great sides two great uh, you know, two great sides of the football in special teams and defense. And the, if, if the offense was literally average, we would be in such a better position, but we can't, we can't do anything right. Quarterback play, offensive line, penalties, drops, can't run the ball worth anything, right? How many times did we attempt to, to run the football today? Dalvin Cook had a lot of opportunities. Brees Hall had a lot of opportunities. The, 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 the run blocking, is awful it's awful still having problems on the on the right side of the offensive line at, at least we took a couple shots down the field but it's not like we really had that much success doing that and you can maybe argue we were forced into doing that because we can't run the football we can never run the football and I just can't believe we're sitting here right now, right in December, as a four and eight football team. That win against the Eagles feels like an eternity ago. It feels like years ago. Like we are, how are we getting worse week by week? We are getting worse and worse and worse. I would not be surprised if defensive players started, you know, throwing their hands up. I, I mean, again, where's the accountability? The season's pretty much passed us by. We got Houston winning today. You know, we got all these teams in the AFC stacking wins. Yeah, they're facing adversity. The second adversity is thrown our way, week one, we fold. I don't I don't remember if it was one Jets drive or hard knocks, but there was a segment where Sala was talking about adversity and having to, you know, respond to it and everything like that. Like, we are literally doing the opposite. We are literally folding. And it makes you ask the question, does Joe Douglas even value winning? He's been here for, he's, he got brought in in 2019. We have not been, we, we haven't even reached 500 to end the season. He's been here for years. 
Saul has been here for two and a half, over two and a half years, has yet to finish as a 500 football coach. There's so many questions, not enough answers. <clears throat> Tons of injuries all over the place. I know a couple Falcons got hurt today. You know, obviously a couple Jets got hurt today. Just undisciplined, sloppy football, just pathetic offensively it's it's just so hard to watch it's so hard to like it makes you ask the question like what 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 is happening on the offensive side of the football during the week to look this bad every single game every single game it's like this no matter who we play I said this in, in I think the last week's recap video I you know if you're a fan of a of any other team out there I don't care who Carolina Arizona Minnesota, New Orleans, whoever it is, I will take your offensive coordinator. I will take, I will trade offensive coordinators with you right now. You don't even have to tell me who we're getting. I will take him over Nathaniel Hackett at this point in time. It's, you know, and I don't want to dive too much into the drama, the circus with the whole, well, do we keep Sala and do we keep Hackett because this is what Aaron Rodgers wants and Aaron Rodgers has a say and he's like essentially like co-general manager and has like say in who stays and who goes. I don't even want to dive into that mess right now, but I will say this starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we're going to be breaking down NFL draft stuff. This is something I'm super excited to talk about. Uh, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, if you will. On one hand, I really have been wanting to talk about a bunch of different prospects that uh, I feel strongly about, right? I, I think there's a bunch of guys that really would be great Jets, would be massive upgrades for this team. Guys that are realistic at this point, especially because we keep on losing. It seems like we're on a one-way street to a top five pick. That's how bad we are. Um, now you could, of course, make the question, do you even want Joe Douglas making this pick? You know, it's a fair question at this point. Um, but yeah, again, I'm so excited to talk about this stuff. But then on the other, it's like, here we are again, talking about the future. Here we are again talking about the draft in season. Here we are again talking about how the season's out over. We still have over a month left, month left of games, but it just seems like no matter what, we cannot fix anything on the offensive side of the football, and it is costing us games week after week after week, literally five straight games five straight games. So, you know, are we going to, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to pop on the Roberts on the press conference. And I have a feeling he's going to talk about the shooting, shooting ourselves in the foot and the, you know, ill-advised mistakes and how we just have to get better and how, you know, hopefully things are going to click and how things are up in the air at this point. And we got to watch the film and get ready for whoever it is next week, Houston, who's on a roll. I mean, seriously, at this point, do you envision the Jets winning a game for the from from here on out? You know, the NFL is kind of weird. I do feel like we will get one, one or two wins down the way, uh, you know, down the road. But, you know, at this point in time, if this is the performance, if this is what the Jets continue to look like and we follow the the trend here. Sorry about the glare, too, by the way. I'm just kind of noticing that. Um, if we follow the trend, we're just going to be getting worse and worse and worse as the season goes on. Unless, of course, Rodgers comes back. But I do not want Rodgers coming back. I don't want him getting hurt again. I don't want him playing behind this offensive line. I don't want him on MetLife's turf. I don't want him playing if the Jets are 5 and 10. I don't want that at all. So, colossal waste of so many things. What a disappointment. And I'm sorry I have to keep posting these negative videos. I don't want to do that. But again, starting tomorrow, expect some draft content on the channel. I'm really excited to do it. Really, re really excited to talk, get, get some positivity out there. My Lord, it's just like this team day after day. It's just negative story after negative story. It's just, you know, I apologize that I, I you know, I'm coming on. I, you know, I, I'm trying to see the silver lining, right? I want to talk about Jermaine Johnson looking like a beast out there today. to get a sack and a half or two sacks. I want to talk about this defense going out there and dominating, but it's just not translating it to wins, right? Even in certain losses, like I, I felt like I felt better. You think back to like Zach's rookie year, like that loss against the Eagles at the end of the season, um, or I think the Jets could have even maybe won that game. Gardner Minshew threw for over 400 yards, but Zach looked really good. Uh, the Buccaneers game, 
right? Zach's rookie season. That was so much fun. Even like some of the early days with Sam Darnold, like Jets Texans at the end of the year, Jets Packers against Aaron Rodgers with the Jets won. Like th th those games were great. Uh, even the Chiefs game this season, but man, there is just, it, it, it's, it's, it's just so bad offensively. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for sticking with the channel. Th if you got this far in the video, 15, 16 minutes in, I appreciate it. You truly mean the world. Um, this team, we have a lot of work to do offensively. We have a lot of work. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, go Jets.